Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Pam Esquire, also known as Your Law Intellect. As you get these notifications, make sure that you speak to me as you come in. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe if you not, have not done so already. I see you guys trickling on in here. So I'm glad you got your notifications. Let me speak to as many people as I can before we get on topic today. We have a few things to talk about. Hey, Nessa, how are you this Thursday? Hey, Ray Bishop, Tiff Chanel, good to see you. Alice, it's always good to see you. Miss King, good to see you. Hugh Mom, Hysteria, good to see you. Patricia Ellington. CBBJ, always in the house and ready to work. Shout out to all my mods. Lindsay, good to see you. Michi Me, good to see you. Lady E, Jackie Davis. Davida, good to see you. Hey, Compton girl. Venus Bowens, shout out to all 73 that are on here already. Please hit the like as you enter. And welcome to everybody that sees this on the replay. Lonnie, good to see you. LaFrance. Woo, child. I hear you. Good to see you. Sweet Nectar, good to see you. Trina Ballard, good to see you. Lynn Brown. Hi, Jeff. St. James. What did you say? Scumbag and slump scum. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What up, though, Myrna? Reese, good to see you. Don, good to see you. You guys are coming in quick. Make it make sense. Good to see you. Mikey Stone, good to see you, Lynn Gale. Thank you guys for all of your support. Again, if you haven't done so already, please like, please share. Tell everybody about our channel because we have a good time over here. So let's get right into it. Yes, you guys, please. If you got, I don't know, something about this subject makes people want to use bad words. If you have to use bad words, I'm going to need you guys to find another way, you know? Let's not cuss in the comments. Let's have some respect in the comments, y'all. Kelly Harris, good to see you. Hey, 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 hey. So we got a few things to discuss right quick. I hope you guys have a little bit of time. Hope you're not at work. If you are at work, you might want to put your earbuds on, the ones that nobody can see, because some of this stuff, you're going to be like, oh, wow. So the first order of business that we have today is the detention hearing for what is his name Pollock? he was the only one oops sorry about that y'all let me let me try that again Polak was the only one. Remember, he was one of the robbers in the Whitehead saga. If you guys are not familiar, please watch my previous videos. We discussed um, two of the three robbers have been nabbed um, in the alleged robbery of um, Bishop Whitehead. And um, one of those did not get any bail the last time. And so he had a detention hearing today. Hold on one second, because I'm hearing myself. Hold on one second. So today in the courts in New York, in federal court, there was a detention hearing that was held for Saquon Pollock. Um, he was requesting, if you recall in our last video, when people were asking him why was he detained? And I said, even though that the judge felt that he needed to have a detention hearing, a full blown detention hearing. So it sounds like today a detention hearing was, did take place. Um, unfortunately, it sounds like he was still detained according to this document. 
So all I can do, I obviously don't have the video, so and I wasn't there because it's in New York, but I can tell you guys what occurred. Um, it says, according to the minutes at the first call, the court requested that the defense attorney contact his client. So apparently he wasn't even there. He being the defendant was not present. So basically you have to waive, your client has to waive their uh, presence in order for you to speak on their behalf. So the second call by the court, um, the defense did waive the appearance. So he was able to, the defense attorney was able to put the information on the record as for why his client should be allowed bonds. We won't know what that argument was until a transcript come down. This literally just got posted on PACER. Um, the prosecution, they put their reasoning as to why they think that he should not have bonds. And we can surmise based on the alleged history that has been in the newspaper that he's a quote danger because he's done um, alleged robberies in the past um, that he should not be on bond. As of this, it looks like to me, the court denied his bond. So it looks like Polak will still be in prison, in jail. I'm sorry, he's not in prison unless he gets unless he actually gets found guilty, but it looks like he'll be locked up for now. Now, as I said before, circumstances may change and his attorney may continuously request bonds. All right, so now we have an update as it pertains to the bond. You guys got any question before we go to our next order of business here as it pertains to Whitehead? Let me check the comments. Hey to everybody. <laughs> you said his mess is cuss word he just saying. I understand sometimes you want to use the bad words, but What's up with the third man? We haven't heard anything. So all we can assume is that he has not been arrested yet or arranged yet. Because there's literally nothing as it pertains to him. He's still the redacted name on the indictment. You know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We don't know if Whitehead is the third man. These are the commenters' opinions right now. So we don't know if he's the third man or not. Thank you so much, uh, Granny of Seven. I appreciate it. No, they have not. They have yet to capture the third person, and we don't know who that third person is. You guys can speculate. That's fine, but we don't have any solid facts as to who that third person is. No, we don't have any information that the third suspect is in protective custody. They haven't. They literally have not talked about this third person at all. I've just been staying on it, watching the filing, um, just so I can report to you guys. As soon as, as soon as they posted that, I knew this morning that there was a bond hearing. So as soon as they posted it, I literally went live. You said allegedly ish. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But okay, let's go to number two real quick. We, you know, you know how we do. We we don't tarry long. We just get our facts out there. So we have another thing going on here. Oh man. Okay. This just posted today, I want to say like 15 minutes ago. Mayor Adams' flashy bishop friend is slum landlord dogged by legal issues. That literally just posted. You guys see the time, October 6th at 3.10 p.m. <laughs> so let's go over this article. So as provided in here, these are, who wrote this? 
Isabel Vincent wrote this of the New York Post. She has our favorite suit on as the picture. And it says, according to this article, a Gucci loving, let me go on here. A Gucci loving Brooklyn Bishop who was robbed of a million worth of jewelry and a caught on video heist is the slum landlord evicting several low income tenants from properties he owns in Connecticut, according to tenants and public records. Lamar Whitehead, 44, a convicted felon who has described Mayor Eric Adams as a close friend and supporter, is trying to kick out 11 tenants for their failure to pay rent at the four buildings owned by his company, Whitehead Estates LLC in Hartford. Court records show. Whitehead bought the buildings, which he described in a social media post as one of the biggest housing complexes in the state. In December 2021, five months later, in May, he began legal proceedings to evict the tenants, according to court records. Y'all, let's go on. One tenant who has lived in one of the buildings since 2019 is among those being evicted. He told the Post Wednesday that he has not paid his $875 in monthly rent for his two-bedroom apartment for the last four months to protest deteriorating conditions in the building where he said there is no fire escape, the emergency doors are bolted shut, and his apartment has multiple leaks, roaches, and mice. Yet, as soon as Whitehead took over the properties last year, the bishop announced he wanted to increase his rent to $1,400 per month, the tenant said. A lawyer for Whitehead told the Post Wednesday that the increases reflect, quote, general market rent, end quote, in the area and that the fire escape is now up to code. Let's look at some of these pictures. So this is the building. Remember, if you guys have been on to his, um, if you went to his Instagram page, you know that this is the building that he's shown as Whitehead Estates. Yeah, I need you guys to get these lights up now. It's 134 you guys on here. Get the lights up. You want other people to know about this this channel as well. So you guys see the building. This is the building. This is his apartment, allegedly. He got the Arizona sweet tea and all the buckets to catch the rain. It says an apartment inside one of the Hartford, Connecticut buildings owned by Whitehead. He said, quote, when I brush my teeth, I have to place a bucket under the sink because it leaks so much, one tenant told the Post. A homeless person shouldn't even be living here, said Joseph, who would only be identified by his second name, did not want to provide his last name for fear of reprisals. When I brush my teeth, I have to place a bucket under the sink because it leaks so much. My stove has never worked. The evictions are taking place even as Whitehead's own company defaulted earlier this year on a $4.1 million loan on the buildings which contain 32 apartments. In September, Hartford's Metropolitan District Commission sued Whitehead Estates LLC for failure to pay the water bills on the properties known previously as Harmo Homes in the city's rundown Northeast neighborhood, according to court records. Chief O'Pete's Whitehead Estates LLC lists its address at a sprawling 9,000 square foot mansion in Paramus, New Jersey. Okay, we're not going to talk about this house. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to go past that. 
Whitehead made headlines last week when two men were arrested for the July 24 jury heist that unfolded as he delivered a sermon at the Brooklyn House of Worship Leaders of Tomorrow. He said they caught the robbers, the ones that robbed my church. You guys seen the, post, the Facebook and the Instagram. Weeks after the summer robbery, Whitehead railed against those who doubted that he had been the victim of the heist and said he was, in fact, the instigator. He is currently suing two of the distractors. You see how he, he got their stuff on there. <laughs> they got a picture of his, his bracelet and his ring. Goodness, they got good little close-ups. Whitehead, who mounted an unsuccessful bid for Brooklyn Borough President in 2021, now faces a lawsuit from a former campaign worker who said the bishop stiffed him out of more than $56,000. Whitehead called the lawsuit frivolous in an interview with the Post earlier this month. And last year, Congregate hit him with a separate suit claiming he built her out of $90,000 in savings. Pauline Anderson accused the clergyman of convincing her to liquidate her life savings and pay him a 90K investment in November of 2020 with the promise that he would buy and renovate a home for her, according to her Brooklyn Supreme Court lawsuit. Instead, lawsuit used the fund, instead, Whitehead, I'm sorry, used the funds as a down payment on the contract to purchase this New Jersey house, allegedly. Adding to his why his financial woes, a default judgment was entered against him last year for a $335,552 construction loan on his home in Bergen County court record show. In 2019, why his company tried to pay part of the loan with a check backed by insufficient funds, according to court records. Why his lawyer did not respond to questions about the bishop's defaults or outstanding water bills. There goes his Rolls Royce in front of the storefront. Known for his flamboyance, Whitehead preaches a prosperity gospel that focuses on the material benefits of maintaining a close relationship to God at the Canarsie-based church he founded in March 2014. He often films himself denouncing rival pastors and offering many life lessons from behind the wheel of his car on his Instagram page, where he has 1.5 million followers. Quote, what God did for me, he can do for you. End quote. Whitehead told his social media followers last week while wearing sunglasses and a suit stamped with Dior in the driver's seat of the car. This is a long article, y'all. This year, he promised real estate classes to his social media followers. Listen, I'm telling y'all, join my real estate classes. Whitehead said in a February Facebook post in which he pulled up outside his Hartford housing complex in a white Porsche. I'm going to show you how to buy and flip, how to buy apartment complexes and renovate them. And first and foremost, understand that God did and not me. God is amazing, end quote. Whitehead also made headlines in May when he tried to negotiate the surrender of an accused subway shooter on the Q train in Brooklyn. Whitehead claimed to have spoken with Mayor Adams while the suspect was on the loose. There goes the picture of him and his buddy, Mayor Adams. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they got his background when he was born. Okay, they about to talk about his daddy. He, uh, his father, a community leader, an entrepreneur in Crown Heights, was strangled to death by police six months after his son was born. Arthur Miller, who had a gun strapped to his waist, intervened when police stopped his younger brother, Samuel, who was driving with a suspended license. The confrontation with several cops at the scene grew out of hand, and Miller's death led to widespread protests against the NYPD. Oh, I never heard that he had a gun strapped to his waist and it was really his brother that he was intervening. I probably should have looked into that story a little more. Growing up as a young man on the mean streets of Brooklyn was not easy, reads Whitehead's Meet the Pastor bio on the church website. 
Bishop Whitehead found himself in a predicament that many young men are faced with today, being raised in a single parent home without a father and expected to survive in a world that was designed for him to fall in. Oh my goodness. But in 2005, his life took a different turn. Whitehead was charged in a $2 million identity theft scam in Brooklyn and Long Island and was accused of stealing the identities of several people and using their personal information to buy cars and motorcycles, according to his 2006 indictment. Whitehead was busted on Riverside Drive and Manhattan Drive in a Land Rover and clad in a red and white waist length mink coat. In January 2006, according to the Post, by November of that year, court records show he filed for bankruptcy. Whitehead was convicted on 17 counts of identity theft and sentenced between 10 and 30 years. He spent five years at Sing Sing before being released on good behavior in 2013. Y'all see that? Good behavior, 2013. Whitehead credited his time in prison for bringing him closer to God and said he was inspired to found his church. My goodness. The New York Post had time today because this is a really, really long article, guys. Y'all got a lot of questions. Let me let me try to back up here because I was really just reading and I wasn't paying attention to the questions because I know you guys got plenty of them. Jeez, oh, Pete. Ooh, she said, woo, child, the ghetto. <laughs> you guys saw the pictures, right? Oh my God, this is terrible. What's in the world? Well, there is my answer. He owes money in the building, shame, and he's trying to get excessive rent from these tenants. Duh. This is sad. What kind of man a guy is this? So what you're telling me is brag a bishop can't pay a water bill. Can't I'm I'm assuming you're saying pay. <laughs> is that what you're trying to say? A water bill on his building. Now I see why he wants to see those guys sue those guys for 20 million. Yes, greetings everyone. Thank you to my mods again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. you guys hit like, hit share, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you're enjoying this content. Please tell a friend. Now that's why he needs subscriptions. It makes sense. What is he? What does he have subscriptions for? Is he doing subscriptions for like YouTube or something? You're not the first person mentioning in the subscription, but I didn't know what that was referenced to. Thank you so much, John Edwards. Oh man, which lawyer, right? He has a few lawyers that we we know. Prosperity message, that's what they call it. Thank you for the cash app, Alice. I appreciate it. If you guys would like to cash app, we take blessings over here too. Jeff James, but he's boasting about his millions. Fed's gonna take that house. Wow. See, what, what made me really look, if you follow the pattern, so today he did post, and I do go on his page every now and then just to see what the next thing is. I'm sure he'll probably do something about the guy not having bonds, that he talked to something and the guy didn't get bond today and be excited about that. But yeah, I'm sure the New York Post knows about it, but this is what they chose to talk about, the, the apartment buildings, and he's allegedly evicting people. And you've seen the picture on here of what they said one of those apartments looked like with the water leaking in the cans. It's crazy. It's over 200 people in here. I need you guys to like, hit, share, subscribe. He said, I heard a voice from God saying, leave me out of this mess. <laughs> it's a real estate class. Mm, mm, mm. It's a lot going on, isn't it, you guys? It's 
just a lot. I thought I was just going to talk about, okay, we said we'll follow up on the bond hearing. I know other people were saying other things and reading into it. I'm like, no, he's going to have a bond hearing. Now, he might get denied again, but he is entitled to a hearing after a bond package is filled out. And that's what occurred today. But then I just ran across this like, oh, wow. He said that's why he was robbed in retaliation of him being involved with the subway shooter being caught. He did say that, but the subway shooter's lawyer had a whole different story and said he didn't have anything to do with turning them in. So, and the family said they didn't know him, allegedly. But he said he knew the aunt went to his church or something, but I'm assuming maybe it was the closer relative that said they didn't know him. Oh. <sighs> Let's see if there's something else. Let's see what else this article has to say. This is a very, they put a lot of time into this. This experience challenged him daily to stand on everything he knew about God, according to his website. Bishop Whitehead learned to fashion his life as the Apostle Paul did during the times of his imprisonment and draw closer to God in his affliction. Bishop Whitehead believes that through this experience, his walk and his calling in God was solidified and strengthened. The pastor who drives a Rolls Royce along with other vehicles has had ties to Mayor Eric Adams since he was Brooklyn Borough President from 14 to 21. Whitehead has appeared at several high profile events with Adams who spent eight years as Borough President before being elected mayor in 2021. Quote, the bishop lost his dad. Arthur Miller was his name during a police incident, end quote. Adam said during a press conference in the Bronx this summer, I have always maintained relationships with people who have gone through traumatic experiences. My goal is to mentor people who go through crisis. I, I'm starting to think they're really trying to take some shots at Adams because they mention him too much and it's just too many pictures. So... Maybe they didn't want him to be mayor. I'm just guessing. And so this affiliation, that's probably why he felt the need to kind of um, disassociate himself because it's a, probably going to affect him politically. I would surmise. But yes, you guys, this is the picture of the alleged um, one of the units that this is the alleged one of the alleged units in the properties of Whitehead, and he's evicting folks. Child, not the mink coat in the same year as the bankruptcy. <laughs> he is he has always been tacky. Did you just say Bishop Lip Gloss? <laughs> I did say don't cuss. So I, at least you guys aren't cussing. I, I appreciate it. You said blessed assurance Jesus is mine. New York Pope put icing on a bomb cake in the article. <laughs> right? They had time today. I'm like, well, when did y'all get this information? Because this was quite lengthy. Well, at this point, a lot of the stuff is cut and paste because they kind of put the same stuff in there. They're going to talk about his history. They're going to talk about his, um, you know, his incarceration, the lawsuits. They always talk about that in every article at this point. His properties are just a reflection of his spirit. That's an observation. I keep saying this mess ain't over to the fat lady sings. <laughs> Stay on it, Lady Pam. You're a great attorney. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Patterson. I appreciate it. Yeah, but he tags the New York Post. Have you guys noticed that? So today he did put up a post, as I figured that he was going to go down there and watch the bond hearing and he tags them in in all of his posts like they don't even say nice things about you have to they might put one little blurb but that's about it they don't never say anything about you that's nice like why would you tag them you should try to find it it got to be one paper out there that's trying to come up and you should have connected to them or have a pr person that's willing to give you more favorable views but you're not getting this with the new york post you're just not getting it yes 
please everyone hit the like, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you to everyone, all of our new subscribers. We are growing, you guys. Um, so he got out of prison in 2013 and started his church in 2014. That would be correct. It was the $1,400. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to the top and just read that one more again. Because uh, for all the new people that this is a picture of the building of uh, well, the building, the Whitehead Estates that he shows, like all the videos where he's driving up in his fancy, expensive cars. Um. So. Apparently, he is trying to kick out 11 tenants, according to this article. I'm sure they looked at the court filings for their failure to pay rent at the four buildings owned by his company. So apparently, he just bought this not too long ago. And five months later, he started legal proceedings to evict the tenants according to court filings. I'm just going to try to cliff note this for the ones that came, just came in. He told the Post Wednesday that he being a tenant there, that he has not paid his $875 in monthly rent for his two-bedroom apartment for the last four months to protest deteriorating conditions in the building where he said there is no fire escape. The emergency doors are bolted shut and his apartment has multiple leaks, roaches, and mice. Yet, as soon as Whitehead took over the properties last year, the bishop announced he wanted to increase his rent to $1,400 per month. And this is the picture again. That's the picture of the apartment. Ooh, buddy, we have over 240 in the chat. Could you guys please do me a favor and like? It's free. Hey, Poetic Mouth. I hope I did a recap for you. Kim, your K, Jackson, Kim. He'll, he'll be live tonight talking about this art. Well, he did. He took a picture yesterday where he said, why are you guys so quiet? Why isn't anybody talking about me? And I don't think people stop talking about him. We're just talking about things as they come out. What you want us to make stuff up? So I'm just going to make up stuff. Like whenever it comes out, which we know that it will, we'll discuss it. No worries. Just hold tight. That's all he had to do was wait a day. And now we're discussing him again. He said he needs to leave God and fall out of this mess. <laughs> hey, Patricia. Whoever wrote this, wrote this is deceptive by this man. Whoever wrote what? The portion of that he took on his website? Because I think they just took quotes from his website as it pertains directly to him in his life. That's what I said. The mayor does not want anything to do with him. He's trying to back off nicely, but it's not working. It's my. I think the fact that they're mentioning the mayor so much is something to that, guys. Like the way politics work and the media work, it's something to that. So they're never going to really highlight anything good like he wants if anything good comes out about him because they're going to consistently show this tie. So I'm going to assume it's not being a person from New York Folks really ain't want Mayor Adams in there like that. And this is just another thing to show his ties and his um, choices of companions and friends. And that will definitely affect your political position. He said his sermon Sunday, this uh, get the bag. He going to teach everybody how to get that money. Is that what he said? I think the event space had enough of him because he hasn't been back since he choked the lady. He said he tags everybody.
Born himself for Larry and John. He's all about getting any type of attention, even when it's not in his favor. He's a whole clown. So he got released for good behavior and not because he was wrongfully convicted. This couldn't be written for TV any better. I Y'all just keep following this channel and you will find that everything we've talked about, everything we've analyzed, every paper we and document that we've been able to post, every article, we've been able to verify, cross-reference, and um, yeah. So Pam, he has stated in the past that he owns a whole block where, where his makeshift church is, hmm. I thought he said he owned the block when he was talking about this building that we're talking about now in this article in Connecticut. Because he calls it Whitehead Estates. Then he pulled it down. He does videos and then takes them down and, and now does lies with his wife on the phone and then takes them down. How are you going to be valid? If Adam Snow's like I know, he better distance himself from Bishop Braggadocious. His political career will be short-lived if he stays hooked up with him. I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, well, you know, Whitehead said that the media scared him off. But I think that is, I would surmise, if I had to be a guessing person, that that's the reason why he kind of backed off. Not worth your, your whole political career to be affiliated with anybody. I don't care how much mentorship or, or whatever the excuse that he gave was. He keeps tagging them because he wants to make people think he's important and he's not. These people ain't saying anything about him. They're really not. He does not go after small news outlets for favor. He wants the larger outlets, even if he gets the hate from them. That's true. Reed and Giles would have a field day with all this if he hadn't sued them. He knew it, man. It wouldn't have been a Bernie Macamoni culture. So it would have been lit. I, I think, well, I don't think for Reed, he never, he said what he said and kind of moved on and always said until he gets, till he gets indicted or arrested, this is according to, to Reed, I ain't say it, that he wasn't going to talk about him. So Reed never really talks about him like that. I guess he felt like Larry's response had the most impact because of how big his platform was now with jives i don't think this is stopping anybody from talking if jives won't talk about it he probably will because he's talked after that that um lawsuit was filed <laughs> you know what it would have been if if they put the money i don't know here where i am if you put the money in escrow because you have deteriorating type conditions, they will have a good little fight, you know, about not paying rent. Or if they show that they took their rent money and tried to repair it to show the court. But you can't, regardless of how jacked up your building is or your living condition is, you can't just not pay without, because it looks like you just didn't plan on paying. So I understand nobody, he said he, did, he didn't pay out a protest understandable but do you have that money at your disposal because you put it up in escrow or did you use it to try to fix something too you know so that you can have a defense there's ways to get slum landlords together and then it should be building code violations i mean they said it's a rundown area so maybe that's why they don't pay it any attention but i don't understand why the courts wouldn't ticket him and make him do fix certain things under the law so this may bring light to what he hasn't done in the building as well as a landlord. Whew. Okay, I'm trying to catch up on the comments, y'all. He said, I wish he'd go somewhere. I'm tired of <laughs> I'm sorry, but I doubt he's going to go anywhere anytime So. So why he's not at the store anymore? The last two Sunday he has been at the house preaching or whatever you call it because he was all over the place. That demonic mess messed up my whole week. Yeah, he said, well, he, he told someone allegedly online, this is what somebody told me, I didn't hear him, 
So on a live, what he what he said was because the women came to the church and or they have weirdos coming to the church or whatnot, which really didn't make sense to me as a reason, because if you were going to stop church, you should have did it after that robbery. Like you were robbed with guns in your face, in your your wife's face, daughter's face in front of your congregants on live stream. And the next week you said you didn't care because you had the police there that you were going to still have service. But two women come in there and that causes you to causes you not to have service. It's pretty suspicious to me. Doesn't make sense. He said he's going to have it on Zoom for his church service so things can calm down. Somebody said the landlord would not renew the lease because he had too much drama at his church. How he can sue Larry and, and the king and he has and he was on top of the pulpit showing people the same thing, how he dove on the ground in one of the videos. Good afternoon, Vincent. <laughs> yep. It's definitely a rundown area, the whole area. Are you familiar? Are you from from Connecticut? I think that's where he said it was at Connecticut. Yes, he goes all around the world and it makes no sense. I do not know what Bible he preaching from. Alice says he thrives on attention, whether it's good or bad. 50 Cent is going to do praise and worship. They would not take his money, though, boy. You cannot dive in slow motion. <laughs> so, yeah, for all those that just came in, we first discussed, and we're just going to do a quick summary. We first discussed that Polak, who did, was not let out on bail a week ago when the robbers were caught and ar arrested and arraigned. Um, we had Anderson got out on 50K um, bail, and he had family that assured it. Um, and then we have Polak, who was detained. A bail packet was presented where I guess they tried to put all the information as to why they believe he should have a bail, be out on bail. There was a bail hearing today. And according to what I read, unless I read it wrong, it looks like that he was detained. After the arguments on the record, the court agreed with the government who said that he should, he should not have bail. And he wasn't present. He waived his appearance, so he wasn't there. Only his attorney was there on his behalf. Then subsequently after that, New York Post do, does an article that you guys can all check out. I'll say the name of the author to give them their credit because they put a whole lot of time into this here. Isabel Vincent did a long article, which just came out at 310 little bit over an hour ago. And apparently in that, the place where he owns the block that he brags about all the time. Yeah, apparently um, he hasn't been the best landlord according to some of the tenants and he's kicking people out, 11 to be exact. Real talk, I'm a pastor from Long Island. I wish he would just chill and let things play itself out. He keeps everything hot when he keep, gets upset when his stuff is talked about. Well, I said that in the beginning. My advice on the very first video was just be quiet. You didn't have to come out after the robbery and talk about it. You didn't have to do any of that. You, you can't convince people like before we knew who he was, because we just found out who he was when this happened. Apparently, the New York Post and all of them, they've known about him and they've known about his past, his life, and they've been following him. So he already had a interesting reputation before this even happened. So because of that. This didn't help him. It's like he's trying to persuade the media to look at him in a different way and it's just not working for him but if he would have just been quiet we probably would never talked about him but then he wouldn't have a thousand people on his lives 
he wouldn't have a thousand people on Instagram, a thousand people on Facebook. Now, Sunday, I noticed that it's dwindling down for a sermon. It was like a hundred people on each, you know, platform. But yeah, when he was, when he goes off and stuff, you're going to get over a thousand people because half of us go over there because we're being nosy. Let's just be clear. <laughs> Not that we really want to hear what he has to say. You know, like we really believe, we just like, what, what he got going on right now? We just being nosy. So this does give him traffic to his pages. But he's hoping he, he's hoping that people give him a chance and that he can persuade us that he's not a bad guy. That's what he hopes, but apparently it hasn't worked yet. Pam, did you see him at the BET Awards? He did a stupid little walk out in the hotel, but I noticed he didn't make the red carpet. I'm sure he was crushed. They didn't ask him to. Yes, I did see that. And he did do um, a little... He did some videos on his story to show that he was actually in the BET Awards because he probably knew people would try to challenge it. <laughs> so he did do videos. Now they're disappeared because they were in the Instagram stories. He's pleading his case as much as possible before trial. Well, it's not working. I mean, but he can't help himself. Some people don't know. What did I tell you guys? The gift of goodbye and the gift of hush. Some people just don't have that. And he has to respond. He has to feel like he defends himself. And when it got quiet, like he didn't talk for a couple of days, he does a he does a um post basically saying, Where y'all at? Why y'all not talking about me no more? Y'all should all be apologizing. I've been vindicated. And it's like, no, like people have more questions now than they had before. Now that the two out of the three robbers, everybody want to know where the what they look like. Everybody wants to know where they came from. Everybody wants to know, do you know them? Don't you know them? Everybody want to know why the third person still hasn't been arrested yet. I mean, it's just really presented more questions than it has answers. Vindication is a stretch. I was thinking while being friends with the mayor would keep the heat off him, he wouldn't be under the radar or mayor friend would bury the issues in paperwork. He could then not be accountable. He says he's Archbishop's chief apostle, so I've been waiting to see the affirmation service. Okay. Some folks apologize just to be funny. They did. We're just, to me, I think that we try, I try to be um, open-minded. Like, I know how the process works. You know, a lot of people wanted to read into a lot of stuff that happened, but the feds aren't going to do anything outside the norm to tip anybody off, even if it was some underlying reason to what they're doing right now. They're going to do it in the same processes and procedures. They don't ever let you know what's going on. We getting documents recently of people the feds have been tracking for decades and we just found out so you know they don't have a problem being very quiet and not letting anybody know yes he is but all right all minds cleared we talked about the um we talked about the, the slum slumlord allegation, and we also talked about the detention hearing. So what I want you guys to do for me is to have a great day. Of course, we'll stay on it, and I'll keep you updated on everything that has to do with the case and any other cases pertaining to him. Thank you all for coming over. If you haven't done so already, please like, please share, please subscribe, and welcome everybody that watches this on a replay. I appreciate you. I love each and every one of you guys, and I will holler at you guys next time.